Let's get to the first email today. And the first email today comes to us from David Morse, who writes, Hi, John. I know you've grown tired of talking about movie pass, haven't we all? But I had to know what you thought about the news that they aren't moving ahead with another reverse stock split and will probably now get delisted from the NASDAQ. Uh, is this the final moments for movie pass at last? All right. Thanks a lot for the question, man. And, and yeah, you know, movie pass has been a real, let's say, let's be kind. Movie pass has been a very interesting roller coaster ride, right? Now, first of all, let's be clear. Movie Pass did not invent the idea of a movie going membership. That was done by Cineworld over in the UK almost 10 years ago. So Movie Pass did not come up with this idea. But they are the ones who made it popular in the United States and in North America. And they've been going through a lot of turmoil, ups and downs. Well, where was the fundamental problem with Movie Pass? There's a few things to talk about, but we'll get to those in a second. What he's talking about right now, though, is that MoviePass, their stock has slid again to under two cents, right? At one point, it was at like $60. If you count the 250 to one reverse stock split, it was at like $1,000. I don't even know how much it was for per share. And now it's hovering just over one penny a share. Now, when MoviePass stock dropped... Uh, to under a dollar a number of months ago, they talked about doing a reverse stock split and they did do a reverse stock split. They did a, a one to 250 stock split, which basically means if you have 250 shares, you now have one share. And that artificially increased the value of the stock to up to around $30 again, but immediately dropped again down to, like I said, just over one cent. So what MoviePass has been talking about is doing another reverse stock split of a 1 to 500 reverse stock split on top of that 1 to 250 stock split to again in artificially inflate the, the uh, price of their stock. The reason they were looking at doing this is because the NASDAQ, which is kind of like the, the stock listings, they have a rule. If your stock doesn't stay above $1 a share, you could get delisted from the stock exchange. That's bad for your company. Well, the news he is talking about is the fact that it's now come out that the shareholders, apparently, of MoviePass and Helios and Matheson, which is their parent company, have rejected the notion of doing yet another reverse stock split. This means they are most likely now going to de get delisted off the stock exchange. This is terrible news for this company, and this could ultimately be kind of the last signs of life of movie pass at this point. But you know what? Let's not pretend that it's the only drama going on with movie pass. Movie pass has several items of drama going on right now. First of all, their stock is, as I've said, under two cents. The stock is listed as last I checked, it was hovering at 1.6 cents per share. Not $1.6 thousand dollars per share, not even $1.6 dollars per share, 1.6 cents per share. Now, on, that is leading to the next bit of drama where it is now inevitable in December this company is going to get delisted off the stock exchange, which puts them in a real bind. It puts them in a real bind. The other bit of drama going on with them, though, is right now the New York State um, uh, Attorney General is investigating Movie Pass for fraud. And on top of that, a number of shareholders of Movie Pass are suing the company for giving them misleading and erroneous information. So everywhere you look with MoviePass, everything is kind of gray, cloudy skies. Everything is bad. Now, of course, how did this all start? Where does this drama really come from? Bad business practices, a few little key mistakes here and there. When you really look back on it, the big mistake that MoviePass ultimately made, which is why a lot of people like myself and others started to say why MoviePass was not going to be a viable company. And that was simply this. MoviePass's $10 a month plan, which is what they came out of the gates with, for unlimited movies, you knew, I knew, and more importantly, the company knew, was simply not sustainable. They knew that. They knew well in advance it was not sustainable. Well, why do they do it? This is why they did it. 
And this is where the key problem lay and why I've always had a problem with MoviePass once their intentions became clear. This was a company whose basic business model was blackmail. That was their basic business model. You see, they knew right from the beginning that $10 a month for unlimited movies was never going to be sustainable. They knew that. That wasn't their plan. Their plan right from the beginning was not to make money off their customers, which is how most healthy businesses make their money. No, their business plan right from the beginning was shady and underhanded. It was, let's amass this massive user base. Let's amass this incredibly large subscriber base and then use that subscriber base to essentially, in you know mafioso terms, strong arm and blackmail movie studios and movie theaters and force them to do business with us. They wanted to force and strong arm movie theaters into cutting movie pass into their action. They wanted a percentage of the movie ticket sales and they wanted a, per- a per- percentage of the concession stands. That was their plan all along. Their plan all along was, hey, they knew they couldn't make money. They lied about it because whenever they asked the CEO of MoviePass, hey, how do you plan to make money? Oh, we're we're confident that uh, with volume and everything. No, no, no. They lied. Their plan was always to make money by blackmailing other companies into giving them portions of their money. It was a shaky, shady, unsustainable, and underhanded business model right from the beginning. And when theaters like AMC and Regal kind of said, uh, no, screw you. Look, if you want to do, remember right from the beginning, AMC as a theater chain, and I used to work with AMC, but AMC as a theater chain sent off alarm bells right away saying, folks, this company is lying to you. This company is not sustainable. They're going to set up something that they can never deliver, and we don't want to do business with them. And it turned out they were absolutely right. Turned out they were absolutely right. Because their business model from the very beginning was underhanded and shady. And they're getting what underhanded and shady companies deserve to get. Was the dream of $10 a month, 10 bucks for unlimited movies. A nice dream? Sure. But you got to build nice dreams on sustainable ideas. And that's simply not what MoviePass did. And now what do we got? Their shares tank. Nobody wants to buy them. They're being investigated for fraud. They're being sued by their own shareholders. That was the inevitable outcome of this whole thing. And even now, if you still have a MoviePass subscription, you get to see maybe one movie that they they tell you you can see at like 3.21 in the afternoon when you're at work. I mean, it's just some ridiculous, useless thing. So... What we are seeing happening now has been inevitable for a long time. And yeah, I I still, I know we're in November, I still don't think this company lasts into 2019. They may surprise me, and they may get to February, March, or April, maybe even May, but uh, right now, I don't even think they make it into 2019. And you know what? Good riddance. Good riddance. See you later. Bye-bye.